Greetings. Today I'm going to talk about depth of field. That is the amount of sharpness of an image from front to back. And this can be altered by the photographer. For example, you can have an extended depth of field where everything is sharp, or you can have a shallow depth of field where only part of the image is sharp. It's up to the photographer and that can be done electronically or manually. And that is what I'm going to discuss with you now because by doing it manually I feel I have the personal opinion that it puts the craft back into photography. So please stay with me. Depth of field is controlled by two main things, apertures and the focal length of the lens, that is whether it is a wide angle, standard or telephoto optic or indeed a zoom embracing all three. Apertures do more to the image than contribute to a correct exposure. And this we shall see in just a moment. A small aperture, say factor 11, 16 or 22, will give an extended depth of field. Very useful for landscapes where you want everything to be sharp. But if, for example, you were photographing a flower, a shrub, then you would want that shrub to stand out from the background. And to do that, we use a wide aperture, 5.6, 4 or 2.8, that keeps the shrub sharp, but throws the background out of focus. And you can be quite creative with a shallow depth of field. For example, uh, these shots of King's College Chapel, Cambridge, I can have the foreground out of focus and of course with the background sharp or as we see in the next picture vice versa around the other way the subject is still sharp but now the background is out of focus. So you see controlling depth of field can be a highly creative technique. Wouldn't it be wonderful if it was just apertures that controlled depth of field? No such luck, I'm sorry to say. Additionally, the type of lens in use does make a difference. Now I've got here, this is a zoom lens, so it embraces wide angle, standard and telephoto in one optic. Now when it is on the wide angle end of the lens at the moment that will increase depth of field at any aperture setting. But as I now wind the lens more and more towards telephoto through standard to extreme telephoto then depth of field is gradually reduced until we get to the full telephoto end, where you would have the minimum amount of depth of field at any aperture setting. However, with this combination of the type of lens in use and the aperture in use, then depth of field, controlling parts of the picture that are sharp or not sharp, can be highly creative. A couple of things to mention before we go any further. Macro photography or close-up photography, depth of field is considerably reduced. In fact, depending on the subject, it is difficult to get everything sharp because of the lack, the overall lack 
of depth field. In recent years, a new technology has come along called focus stacking. And what happens here is that the camera will take several images at different focusing points and then rather cleverly uh, blends together only the sharp elements of each picture to create an overall sharp image. Now focus stacking is not really for landscape photography. It can be used and this is a picture where I have done that but it's really not necessary unless you understand basic depth of field. Infinity starts much closer to the photographer than you might imagine. Depending on what lens you are using, then infinity starts at about two to three hundred feet away from you, the photographer. So the amount of area between a subject close to you and where infinity starts is quite narrow. A bit of technical stuff now which I can't avoid. In the days of film a standard lens had a focal length of 50 millimeters which of course is the same focal length for a full frame camera. However, what if your sensor is smaller? Let's take as an example micro four thirds where the sensor is about half the physical size of a full frame camera sensor. Well there the focal length of a standard lens is not 50 but 25 but you get the added benefit of a 25 millimeter lens extra depth of field which of course you wouldn't normally get with a full frame camera. So in a nutshell, if the camera has a smaller sensor, then because it has to use shorter focal length lenses to do the same thing, then depth of field is increased. But don't run away with the feeling where people get this wrong, that you cannot have differential focusing with some smaller sensors including micro four thirds. It might be difficult with a smartphone camera where the sensors are even smaller but not with micro four thirds. Nevertheless you get the benefit of extended depth of field which can be very handy when you are having to handhold in low light. But that's a story for another occasion. A couple of other points before we conclude this photo tip. What is important to remember is that whatever the camera focuses on, then depth of field extends twice as much behind the point of focus as in front. For example, if the subject is six feet away from you, now this would depend on the aperture and the type of lens in use. But let's say for argument's sake that depth of field extends a further six feet beyond the point of focus up to 12 feet, then depth of field in front of the point of focus will only be three feet. Three feet in front, six feet behind. And this is where we come with the dreaded word, the hyperfocal distance. What is it? The hyperfocal distance is creating the greatest depth of field or controlling depth of field, if you like, taking into consideration the aperture and the focal length of the lens. And this is where depth of field can become highly creative. Now, you'll be relieved to hear I'm not going to cover that now, 
That is for a future photo tip program. So maybe I will see you then. Thank you for watching and listening.